Zeke is a problem. Now, I've said this last week, and I'll continue to do and say this one more time. I don't think the backup is in the NFL. And before I get Gary Cobb on here, I want to set this up. Finding a guy like Jalen Hurts is one of the most impossible things to find when you're finding a dual-threat guy who can pass the ball and run the ball. How many of those guys do you think actually exist in today's NFL? None. I don't think the backup is in the NFL. He may not be even in college. I think one of the biggest things that Howie's going to have to find is the backup. I think that kid, uh, Hunley, Snoop Hunley up in Baltimore, is a perfect backup for Lamar Jackson. He is a per- – finding that guy – Like some people go like this, well, let's put Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan couldn't run that offense. He tried that with Gardner Mitchell last year, and the thing was a train wreck. Finding that backup is going to be a chore for Howie Roseman. Let's bring in our friend from Fox 29. Always around the team, our dear friend Gary Cobb. Gary, am I right? I mean, I think Howie finding that backup quarterback, I know the sentimental stuff is all about Nick Foles and some of these other guys, but (laughs) you got to bring a guy in, right, that fits that skill set and the players that are on the team. You know, I, I, I bring this up to people about the Miami Dolphins situation, finding a backup for Tug of Viola, people don't realize he's left-handed. The entire team would have to be changed over. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of left-hand quarterbacks in the NFL. So do you agree that backup quarterback, he may not even be in the NFL. What would you do? Stick with Mariota or would you try something else? Well, you know, you would like to get a quarterback that, um, has you know similarities and everything, but even more important than that, you, you need somebody that can play. <laughs> I mean, you can't have it where a guy can't hit, you know, easy throws. I mean, the guys that are open, you know, got the tight end over the middle, wide open, throw the ball way over his head. I, you know, and I know you want to have a guy who's got you know similar abilities, who so you don't have to change everything, but. I think the thing that um, is more important than that is you got to have somebody who's an effective quarterback. I mean, if guys are open. So, um, I mean, and look at the McKee. I mean, he was able – he was more effective, even though, you know, he, he's not a guy that really can run. He really can't run the option and that's, that's that sort of thing. So, But he was, he was making the read fast. He was getting the ball out of his hands. He was accurate with his throws. That's more important than having somebody that can run. I mean, if it's just somebody that can run, well, you figure you could get a kid uh, off the street who can run, but that doesn't mean he can play quarterback. So I think that he's got to be effective. And that's why uh, Mariota, you know, initially they come forward and go, you know, Mariota's our guy and everything. Look, Mariota's not a guy. If he's turning the ball over and he's stinking up the joint, you can't go with a quarterback like that. You want to go with a quarterback with similar abilities. You want to, but that doesn't mean you can. You might have to go with a guy that's playing well. I mean, and say what you want. Do you wait for someone to get cut, Gary, in the last cuts? that maybe like The kid from Cleveland, that Robertson kid, he's fourth on the depth chart in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Maybe he gets cut. You're going to sit there and you're going to wait. I mean, and you're going to be ready to pounce, even if you got to make a trade. Maybe you do have to trade uh, for somebody that's got uh, two good backups and you trade for one of them. I think that's what you got to do. If um, Mariota doesn't start playing better and and like, you know, it's not just in the games, but in practice, you see him out there yeah. going like, come on, man. You know, he, it just seems like he just not, uh, I don't know if he's lost his confidence Um. He clearly has played the game long enough to where he knows, okay, this is my first read. This is my second read. This is my third read, you know, and then you you got to get on top of the ball. It just seems like all of his balls are sailing. Uh, how about this, Gary? Yeah. Maybe it accentuates just how hard it is to do what Jalen's doing because I've seen Mario to play in Las Vegas with the Raiders. I didn't think mm-hmm. he was horrible. I saw yeah. him down in Atlanta. I didn't think he was horrible putting in a different role. Maybe could it be what Jalen does is what makes him so unique is that finding that guy. That was my point kind of in a way that 
it, you know, it could be this kid. He showed signs in Tennessee too. He's not stunk, but like you said, you're hearing it in practice too that he's not being efficient. Yeah. Then you see it translate into the games. I'm just wondering if you're if you're the coaching staff, you're like, hey man, this just shows you what Jalen does. How incredibly difficult it is what Jalen's doing. Well, you know, I I think there's some truth to that, but I also think that they maybe told him not to run uh, because that's the way he seems. He looks like he's the way he's been playing is, you know, first option, you know, it's like he doesn't even get to the second option. He's taken off and he can run. Now that's the one thing that can. you see you going like this dude can run. Uh, so that's where he, he fits the, um, you know, the, as the backup for, for Jalen is because he does have that threat, but you know, you got to give the play a chance though. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you, you got at least, to me, you got to at least get to that second option, first option, second option. Maybe you don't get to the third, and then you take off. But it's like he looks at the first guy, and it, it's it's also it seemed like he, he was just um, dialed in on one or two guys, you know. And you just oh, it's got it, 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 it's it's Gary, yeah, it's got to get it, it's got to get better. Let me throw you over here. Mm -hmm. Olami Zadeos looks like he's going to be the third wide receiver. And it looks like he's going to beat Quez out. Your take on that. Um, you know, to me, it, I think this comes down to jump footballs. I mean, it, when, I, when I watch Quez go up, I don't see a fighter. Um, you know, this kid here from Atlanta, I think maybe shows a little bit more. But give me your spin that he's lost his job. Well, and the way he's lost it too. Well, you know the kid from Atlanta, he can run too. He you know, can I, run. I don't think he can. He, he, you know, maybe he's not as fast as Quez, but he can run. So you you you've got that speed there. You do have a um, you know deep threat. Uh, it's which is what you want. They want to have a guy who is uh, a threat to go deep. That way, it kind of opens everything up for uh, the you know the two the two the top two receivers, but. The thing that uh, Quez is just, you know, you're trying to get him to step up and take the job. He won't step up and take the job. You know, it just, you know, uh, again, with the, I don't know whether it's confidence, but um, they know this year that they're tired of the games. I mean, they want somebody that they can rely on. And I don't know if, um, if Quez makes the team, if he's a starter, if he's not a starter. You know, I don't know if he. Why isn't he things. on special teams? Well, you know, he uh, he has been a kick returner. Now he has done that, but I you mean, know, is it because they don't think he's tough enough? Uh, it might be that, and maybe they don't they don't trust him as a punt returner. I don't know if they they wow. trust him back there. I have he has returned kickoffs, but I, ha I haven't seen them really where they put him in there consistently as a punt returner, because as a punt returner. You have got to be sure-handed. I mean, because you're going to be catching the ball with people standing around you. And if you have a fair catch, a lot of times those guys are standing around you. So if you don't catch the ball, you know, you're turning it over and you can't afford that. You cannot afford, especially with the position change and everything, if you're not catching the ball as a punt returner, then you are not rep not a punt returner. <laughs> now, I would say this too. I mean, I get, I get he's got a hamstring, but I don't think the – I mean – Usually with good players, you're going to be patient and wait for him. I don't. I I think that that equity's gone. I don't think they're waiting for him, and I think that he's lost that equity in the building. And just because he had some nice, you know, OTAs and such, I think what they're seeing with the kid from Atlanta, I think they're going to go like I probably. How much say do you think Jalen has in this? Uh, I could imagine he could be, you know, if he really believed in somebody, you know, if he believed in a guy, if he was his guy, uh, I don't know that he has that kind of rapport with Quez to where he would stick his neck out that far for him. What has Quez done yeah, you know, no. to, really, to really establish that? I haven't seen it. When he's done it, it hasn't been in the games. I've been looking at the practices. It hasn't been in practice. So I don't think he has that type of rapport uh, with, with Jalen. So, I, I just think it's it's, it's um, the, the, as much as they've done. See, they were playing all the games during the offseason. You know, Quez did this. Quez did that. I'm going, I was out there. What did Quez do? 
you know, they wanted to kind of boost him up. That's why I think Nick came out at the at the end of, of one of the camps, you know, oh, Quez, Quez. I'm going like, what, what is this? You know, what is this confidence building? Building? That's what they were trying to it, do. It, it totally was confidence building. That's Gary, was, how, yeah. how concerned are you with the linebacking core? Miles Jack calls it a career. Um, you know, it comes to a time when you're looking in your dorm room, when you're sitting there and you know the time has finally come, you got to make that call to yourself there first before you call the team up. But mm -hmm. the linebacker core, man, I mean – it's really iffy right now for me. And for me, it is a little bit because I look at it and I'm like, it's Cunningham's played well. I still see false steps with with Dean. I just think mm -hmm. that's got to do with reps. So, yeah. I mean, now you get an injured Hassan Reddick. I mean, how do you look at the core? Well, Are you concerned? Uh, you know, Reddick, I, I wouldn't even put him in the linebacker. Yeah, team true. Because he's really one of the pass rushers. But, um, but, but really, you know, it, it is something that you look at and – you know, you could you could feel good about it that it's going in the right direction. Like they really liked, you know, um, for uh, Nicobe to make that play, to make the play he made the other night and everything. Uh, but they just want to see consistency. You know, that's what they've got to do is they got to be consistent about what they're doing. And I, I think it's going to take them some time because really hasn't played a lot. It's, it's just that simple. I mean, they let him play some. He is going to have to learn on the run. And they hope that he's going to play well. And, uh, you know, uh, also um, with uh, Cunningham, you know, uh, they, they, they wanted, you know, that these guys are going to play well together. But um, Gary, they, they ran they, the ball right down their throat with twos and threes offensive linemen in that game on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And there was a 14 play drive. I get the punch out and all, but yeah, I mean, Dean and Carter played in the triangle. And they got knocked off the football. I mean, if it wasn't for that punch out, I mean, the first quarter was this. They ran 32 plays, had mm -hmm. 100 yards. The Eagles had 12 plays and 25 yards. I mean, they dominated them with the twos and threes. I mean, you well, know, I, 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 you know, I, everybody in Philly came away going, well, the punch out was – and I'm like, yeah, well, that's not how I saw that. I saw false steps and DTs and linebackers, not yeah. the right positions. Well, it's 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 uh it's definitely not what you would have hoped for, you know. When you see the consistency, that's the thing. Well, and and they're looking at it and saying, well, you know, he hasn't played a lot, so um, right I, now I think it's reps too, Gary. Gary, I think it's reps too. Yeah. He needs the reps, that, and yeah, so yeah, I think he needs a rep. But right now, you know, you look over, they look on their finger, you know, they're married. Oh yeah. So that because I don't know where they're gonna go right now. So they're, they're figuring, hey, we're married to this kid. Right now, uh, we think he's going to come through for us and everything. But right no, now, you're, I don't, I don't you're, see hey, where are they going to go. Are, right? We're What's here that? late August. Ain't no, dude, there ain't no going back. You've walked down the aisle here. Yeah, and that's why they, they wanted to get out and get some experience playing beside him, you know. Yeah. Um, so we will see. And, uh, you know, they've got some guys in front of them that, that should be, you know, uh, really strong and tough in the middle and everything. So we will see. But right now, it's too late. You know, too late uh, to do it. And I completely agree. How would you play this last exhibition game? Again, I guess in our time, it was either four or five when it came to preseason games. So this is kind of like the dress rehearsal was really last week. Hey. So this is – now, are you looking now nope. for like – like 52, 53, are you still trying to put together your safety rotation? Are you looking at maybe rosters around the league for more linebacker help? I mean, how are you looking at this last week here if you're Howie? Well, uh, they're looking around. If there's somebody that they like, uh, they definitely will look out there and, and, and grab because they are looking. Uh, but right now, you know, they're going to play this practice tomorrow and everything. Hey, but training camp is over as far oh, as yeah. I'm concerned. I mean, and, and – and what they do on, on Thursday night, they're going to have kids out there, you know, trying to make the team and everything. But for the most part, most everything, the decisions are already have been made. Oh, yeah. And Would you say we're 97% pretty much? We're probably down to the 51 or set. They're probably yeah. looking at the last two to try to add on what they're going to do. do. Does this week come down to this, Gary, in your opinion, and how the Eagles and how he works? Because you know this. 
what 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 happens is an old lineman or old line coach, a D line coach, linebacker coach, a safety coach, all those coaches get into the final week meeting on the roster being set. They petition to carry six or seven linemen, O linemen, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe seven or six D linemen. And the head coach and the personnel people have to make the decision on who they're going to carry more, right? Does it, it, that's right. That's kind of what we're doing this week on yep. figuring out what who, who are we going to carry long, more on? O-linemen, D-linemen, linebackers, safeties. Is that what this is about this that's week? That's what it's about. And, and you know, uh, some of the guys in there, um, you know, depending on how strong they are, you know, they could put their neck out there for somebody to say, hey, look, I really believe in this kid. I really – you know, go in there and really fight for him. Uh, and, and then ultimately, you know, of course, it's it's not their call, though. That's not their decision. They, they're going to go in and make their, you know, um, make some type of argument for their guy. And then ultimately, you know, some people, um, you know, uh, it, it's not the assistant coaches that are making the call, though, you know. And, and, and Howie's got to sit in there. And ultimately, it's Howie's decision. So he will make the call. But you know, they got to make they got to go in it with come in there with their case. It's like, you know, the judge and the, the lawyers coming in there before the judge. You got to come in there and make your case for a guy. And, How and much then all other, they'll be looking other places, too. What's that? How much is Nick's influence in there? Well, I think Nick is in there. Yeah. You know, uh, Nick has a strong say about something. And, and I think he's in the same position as the uh, the assistant coaches. Only, of course, he's got more of a say. But. If he really believes in somebody, somebody he wants, he can go in there, Howie, say, doggone Howie, I believe in this guy. we got to keep him. We cannot let this kid go, whatever. We're going to hang in. And so he's going to give his opinion. But ultimately, it's Howie's decision of who stays and who goes. But he's going to listen. And I think he does a lot better job now of listening to uh, the, the assistant coaches and uh, even some of the scouts to get their input as to which way he should go. And uh, I think he makes some good decisions because ultimately he leans on them. Two last questions for you. It, okay, well, that being said, where would you be more apt to carry more on, O-line or D-line right now? I probably would, would say the D-line. Um, I, I think that the uh, uh, the D-line has been, been very impressive. And uh, I think that they've got some uh, guys on the offensive line that are – are, are really flexible, you know, um, uh, the young kid uh, that they drafted uh, um, the, that uh, what they came in initially, they're going to have him at just playing at guard Steen. Uh, battling for that job. What's that? Tyler Steen. That's right. You know, th that kid has really been impressive at a number of positions. So Steen, because Kelly, Steen, Kelly and Driscoll will probably be the backups, right? right? Out of the five. And then guys that are versatile. See, those guys are versatile. So that allows you, you know, to, have them do more things. So I think defensively they have some guys that uh, really, I think have come in and really earned it. And, and because of that flexibility that you have up on the offensive line that I think they probably could keep less guys. I heard final question for you. I heard that Aaron Rodgers is going to play in the final preseason uh, game for the jets against yeah, I heard the, it against too, the giants. Yeah. I think it is probably mm -hmm. another reason why he wants to do that. Would you, would you give Jalen at all a rep or would you give him a series or I've, it's just not going to happen because of what went down last year against the Jets. They're not going to have any of that. And because of what we're talking about, when we talked a little earlier about the backup position, you know, you can't have this guy nicked up in any way going into um, the regular season. What would you do, Gary? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think I probably got the answer there to that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, 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 what'd you say, Tone? We're not going to see Jalen Hurts in the final preseason game. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that we're going to. I, I, hey, Roland, I think, I, I, I think Cobb pretty much gave me the answer on um, what we're looking at there. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, and we're not seeing Hurts at all. I don't think so either, man, because I'll tell you this. Maybe if they would have had more of a quality backup, we would have saw a little bit of Jalen this exhibition season. And if people had been playing a little bit better behind Jalen, maybe he would have uh, he would have seen it there. All right, folks, don't forget. Hey, 
We are so looking forward to our friends at Hooters this year. We cannot wait. It's the 40th anniversary of our friends at Hooters. All great seven locations in the Northeast area. Go to northeasthooters.com to find that location nearest to you. We are going to be doing a ton of things with our friends at King of Prussia. Go over to at Dan Cilio Show. You'll be able to see the Big Sills Philly Tour on us being in town each and every single month. We invite you to come out and have a cold one. By the way, if you're putting your fantasy drafts together, this is your place to go to. Again, northeasthooters.com to find that location nearest you. Make a call to get those draft parties. Seats are limited. This is the official home of all Eagle fans, the King of Prussia, and all the Northeast Hooters for you to go to and have yourself a great time. The iconic Hooter girls are going to be serving you Tuesdays by 10 wings. Get 10 boneless free wing Wednesdays. One of the traditions that we've had for over 40 years now, 1983, all you can eat. Kids eat for free on Saturdays. Six items plus the weekday specials we have. Six items, six bucks. Put your favorite draft together. Try the fried pickles. You'll absolutely love it. NortheastHooters.com. Don't forget, King of Prussia. Can't wait to see all of our great friends there. And when you go to Hooters, do me a favor. Tell them Big Sills sent you.